I was just going to do a quick little presentation about speech synthesis. This is something I've worked on since 92 and really been fascinated with since about 85 or so. And, uh, the idea of you know, making a human voice out of software in real time was always very intriguing to me. And um, the first thing I did, the obvious thing to do, was you know, go look at the oscilloscope. So I looked at waveforms for a lot and uh, went off on a lot of wild goose chases about you know, trying to replicate voice by trying to copy waveforms. The trouble is the waveform is not really the function domain that the speech resides in. It's more of a spectral domain. And uh, so after learning about Fourier transforms and things, I was able to build these kinds of programs like this. What this program does is it makes recordings of audio and then it shows them in three dimensions. So along this axis here, we have time, right? You start off and you can see down at the bottom it says, uh, okay, so almost six seconds out here, right? Then if we go from the bottom here, we got 21 hertz, and then we can go all the way up to the Nyquist limit, we can go up to 11.025 hertz. The darkness at any given point is the energy at that frequency at that instance. So what happens is these vertical slices in this main pane are Fourier transforms of just what, what you see in that sample waveform up there. I found this USB headset works really well for whatever reason. It seems to have a good microphone in it. So I'll get this thing here and I'll say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. So you can see, you can see now you get some appreciation for what your ear sees when it hears speech, right? That's what your ear sees over time. Your ear doesn't really know the waveform, and the waveform is really not that important. So you can see you see all these bands how they're grouped together. Do you see? Uh, I'll move over here. Now you see there's something right there, right? We're at 129 hertz. That's the pitch of my voice. So in, my, in our vocal tracks, we have our vocal cords, right? And there's something called the glottis, and it, it, it snaps. As air passes through it, it opens up, snap shut. Opens up, snap shut. Every time it snaps, it releases broad spectrum noise, like a real buzzer or something. And your vocal tract, as that vibration passes up your vocal tract, based on how your mouth is shaped, you wind up having a lot of resonances spaced nominally at 500 hertz apart. And also your nasal cavity, which kind of comes up the side, is like an anti-resonator, right? So that's for the M, mm, M, the N, the NG sounds. You can see here as my pitch wavers as I speak, you can see those bands spread out. And what those, what those bands are above the very bottom bands, these are harmonics. So here's the fundamental, here's the first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth, fifth. You can see around the fourth and fifth harmonic, there's a lot of augmentation there. These are called formants. There are, you know, I suppose many formants in our voice, but if you can if you can simulate or synthesize the first three, you get pretty good speech. Two is intelligible, three is pretty good, and four is kind of a little extra. Five, some, some chips can synthesize five formants, but they, they, they move around, these formants actually move. It's good to do this in a gravelly voice because what it does is it, is it compresses the pitch lines maximally so that they wind up so tightly spaced that you can very easily see the trajectory of the different formants. Who has a good deep voice here? Someone in the front row. How about you? Okay. Okay, so when I hit enter, I start off saying, I'm trying to do this. Do it slow. Okay, now you can see his formants there, right? Now this, if you synthesize speech, this is what you need to be worried about. This is, is E, yeah, opens up here. And um, sometimes formants do funny things, like they seem to open up from a singular formant. But if you, so in many cases, if you speak really slowly, you'll find that this guy dipped down and took that place. He became this. So sometimes when you're trying to figure out how to synthesize, you need to look at things over uh, big amounts of time to try to detect where the transitions are. So we could call this F1, formant one. This could be F2, F3. I guess we could call F4, it looks like it might be hiding here based on this trend, or it could just be this. So what we have on the propeller is an object called a uh, vocal tract, which can synthesize. Basically, it's like a mechanism that uh, 
kind of emulates the whole vocal track. And it was a really fun piece of software to write because totally in real time, it, you, know, you give it the waypoint and it will like you know, linearly interpolate to 24 sub bit resolution between your waypoint. So it can move the formants around, it can be dynamically changing the pitch, whatever you want to do. Now this is the object. Some of you might have looked at this on the object exchange. This is sort of like the robot that, that if you feed it a little bit of data, it can make speech. The way this vocal track program works is you set up a frame with these variables right here. There's 13 of them and they're bytes. And they're set up, they're kind of biased and scaled such that a byte is adequate to represent that data. Okay, so a byte's nice, right? And 13 of them's nice because 13 of them will fit within 16, which is four longs, which is a nice number. What you need to do to run the vocal track is you gotta set up some waypoints in, in, in this and tell it how long to transition to the new settings from. Then you can adjust all those. Every time you say go, it'll take a snapshot of that and queue it up. And you can modify some parameters of interest and you can say now transition over this amount of time. And it will continuously create you know, samples at 20 kilohertz and um, you can make speech from this. So the way we set up the uh, synthesizer, it's pretty simple. We start it up here, say v.start, and we give it uh, the pointer to our 13 byte parameter set, which is right up here. And then we say output on pins 10 and 11. So it's kind of, you know, it's going to use those two pins in kind of a push full fashion because this is a monaural signal, right? So you can just say 10 or just 11, or you can go like this and get kind of a cheap stereo effect. We do this repeat block here where we, we set the glottal pitch and a number between 50 and 100 for pitch and the rate will be, or that's the glottal pitch. The vibrato pitch will be between 4 and 24. The vibrato rate will be uh, between 4 and 10 and it's going to call talk. And what talk does is it'll first set up formants. It'll set the formants for E, right, which are out of that table we saw. And then it's going to say, go one, just get there right away. The volume's turned off right now, so we're not going to hear anything when it does a transition. But it immediately takes all the formants and scoots them into position. And when we did that, it, it took a snapshot of that 13 byte set. So what we're going to do now is we're going to modify aspiration amplitude and glottal amplitude. Aspiration amplitude goes to three, glottal amplitude goes to 30, and then sustain it for 500 units. Then we're going to set the next vowel up and say transition over 100, and then, and then because we haven't changed anything, we do another V go, it's just gonna sustain the current settings. And then in the end, we, we turn off the uh, aspiration amplitude, glottal amplitude, set transition over 100, pause for 500, and then of course it's gonna loop. So if we run this program, that's kind of a funny thing. Um, let's see. We have another example program here. Uh, this one, what I did is I, I inhaled and I exhaled, right? And notice here we're only using the aspiration amplitude, not the glottal amplitude. And so it's just gonna make a breathy noise. So uh, I looked at just the four most prominent formants when I inhaled and the four most prominent when I exhaled, right? Now they're not necessarily the actual formants, but they were just prominences in the, they were prominent in the, in the spectrograph. So I'll run this. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. and so you could speed it up, slow it down. You could, uh, you know, we could. Ah, now on this one, I think we're saying girl or curl. Run this. Girl, 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 girl. I, I hear that stuff hours on end. <laughs> <laughs> now here, this was this was a la the, one of the last examples, and it was to demonstrate how to use the this used the other things. See, so far we've just used the uh, aspiration and glottal section and the formants. We haven't used the nasal anti-resonator or the frication, right, for the the white noise sounds that occur at the end of the vocal track, where your teeth whips and tongue. Monster, 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 hey, monster. Hey, show how much memory this takes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is the vocal track. It's about 1.2, 1.3K. So another program adds, I mean, the program on top of that adds just a little bit.